Amen? You see, you might be thinking there's somebody that's too far gone right now that the Lord cannot reach them. The Lord will wait. He is patient and He will seek and save the lost. No matter how far they've gone. I want to encourage you with that this morning because that's the truth of God. Amen? I love that He initiates the search and He intensifies the search. I'm just glad that He kept knocking until I answered. Amen? What He does next is He locates the sheep. He finds the sheep God already knows where every last sheep is, right? He doesn't have to seek. He knows where, where we are r- right now. He knows where they are right now. What he also does is he lays hands on the sheep. The shepherd reaches out to the sheep in its need. He doesn't turn away from it. doesn't leave it in a dangerous place. He lovingly lays hands upon it and brings it comfort and hope to the wayward sheep. When the Lord comes to the lost sheep, he lays hands on the lost sheep as well. Just like he did with you and I. He embraced us with his loving arms, didn't he? He took us just the way we were. Can you imagine that? Taking us just the way we were with nothing to offer him. And he had everything, eternity. He reaches into our mess. The mess we find ourselves in. And by doing so, shows us that there is a hope. A hope in him. That there is a God in heaven who loves them who loves us. Thank God that He doesn't condemn us when He comes alongside us. I'm grateful that He comes to us in grace and mercy, offering hope, forgiveness, and a new beginning, and does that for everybody who will place their faith in Jesus Christ. The next thing that He does, He lifts the sheep up. He takes it from the ground, from the low place, and He lifts us up. He lifts them up. Now, I want to encourage you this morning, not just for this Friday for evangelism, because we should evangelize daily, wherever we're at. We're given an opportunity at all times to be an evangelist. That's not a, even though it's one of the gifts of the church, it's still something that should be in every single one of us. When you have good news, I got a raise. You want to tell everybody, I got a new car, a new house, a new wife, a new child, a new this, whatever it is. Well, I don't mean like a new, I mean, for those of you that were single and (laughs) reel it back, people. (laughs) Amen. A new wife, like if you were single and then now you're married and now you got a wife that's not brand new, but I mean, you know, (laughs) let's, let's stop there because we're never, (laughs) Amen. But I, I, I'm glad that what he does for us, uh, what, you know, we, we always want to give good news, right? And so we want to make sure that the good news that we're giving out, the gospel of Jesus Christ, is done on a daily basis. You know, one of our prayers should be, Lord, place somebody in my path today that I can minister and tell about you. Amen? I'll tell you something. Um, if each one of us did that, next week's service would be packed out there wouldn't be any empty seats if all of us just well you know i'm not from here i don't know the area i don't know how to give directions i don't you know all of our information is right there as a matter of fact on the business cards that are back there is my personal cell phone number i don't know if many of you know that or not. don't be blowing me up now you know sometimes i just you know but anyways we have the means to let people know about jesus we have the resources to say, I know a church. And if we're going close by right here within the week, it's going to be close to where they live. If they're hanging out right there, they're going to be close to this area. We'll have an opportunity to let them know. I'm sure each one of us will run into someone there that we can identify with in some way, shape, or form. That we can tell them about the love of Jesus. We are an extension of God's righteous right hand. Remember that. He lifts his sheep. The shepherd doesn't stop with a mere touch. He reaches down. He lifts the sheep out of the place where he finds it. He removes it from a place of danger. The good shepherd does those from those who are wandering away into sin. He comes alongside them. He reaches out to them. And when they respond to his touch, he lifts them out of their sin and removes them from the danger that they were in. Thank God when Jesus comes into a heart and a life, He delivers us from danger, right? Deliver us from evil. That's what he does for us. Next, he carries the sheep home. 
to. Some have wandered. Some have strayed. I'll tell you one thing. Every single time that I have gone out to evangelize or talk to somebody about Jesus, um, I always run into the backslider. I'll always run into the backslider. Somebody that knows, like the prodigal son went out. He knew the father. He had a home, right? You will always run into the backslider. And if there's one thing that I find, you know why there isn't revival in the church? Because we're not reaching out. Every time I go and do an evangelistic uh, act or, or, or if I'm out there witnessing to somebody or talking to somebody about Jesus, I get this fire in me. I get this fire in my bones that excites me about a new soul that has come to Christ. We have lost our fire because we've lost our desire to evangelize and to talk to people about Jesus. That's what happens to us. We get holy. We get righteous. We get saved. We get all these different things. But we lose the desire to evangelize and tell people about our Savior, the Holy One. Hmm? Why is it? We say, Lord, set a fire upon my soul, right? Set me on fire. I want to be on fire for God. But we won't tell anybody. You, you know, if you guys know about Arizona, one thing that spreads real fast is fire. Look at our forests, right? When it starts, it doesn't take much. You know, somebody that started a fire this last time, I think over just past Prescott, did you know that all he was doing was lighting toilet paper? Did you know that's what he got in trouble for? Thousands upon thousands of acres caught on fire because he was b burning. You can imagine why he was using toilet paper, right? But it sparked something. Has that spark left us? Has it left us as a church? Are we not reaching out on a personal level, on a local level, on a ministry level, on a church level, on every level that there can be? Are we doing what we're supposed to do as a church? I say no. I know I'm not. I'm not speaking just to you. I'm speaking to me. So do we want the church to be revitalized? Do we want the church to be on fire? Do we want the fire of the Holy Ghost here? We do. But I'll tell you something. A lot of times that's what's going to ignite it. Fresh souls will always ignite a church. Always catch us on fire. He carries the sheep home. The Bible says that the shepherd lifts the sheep and lays it upon his shoulders across like this. So he's holding each of the feet on each side. I can picture him taking the feet in one hand and the hind feet in another. This way the sheep is draped around the neck of the shepherd and is absolutely safe and secure. Next, the, sheep, the Bible teaches us that the shepherd carries the sheep home. If you notice in this portion of scripture that we read, I won't read it again because most of us know about the sheep and the shepherd. Notice that the sheep did, is not required to get there under its own power, but goes under the power of the shepherd. He carries us home. We can't get there on our own will, our own might, our own accord. We cannot get there on our own. When Jesus comes to where we are and finds us in our sins, he places us securely in himself and carries us home. I'll give you some revelation this morning. None of you are getting home without Jesus. <laughs> None of us can get home without Jesus. We try to do the works and all the other things to get us there. But it's, it's only Jesus. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody gets to the Father except through Him. Lastly, the shepherd's satisfaction. It's part of his success, right? When he reaches us, it's a success because we we're saved. Amen? That's good news. So when he gets this sheep and he brings it home, what does the Bible say that happens? There's rejoicing. You know, um, I was talking right here when we were doing worship, and Lisette shared with me, you know, that she's seen, what is it you said you saw, uh, Lisette? I'm sorry, I got her eyes. She's walking out the door. I didn't even, I thought you were sitting down.
raindrops and waterfalls, right? And I'll tell you, I've seen in worship before, while we're worshiping and when we're there in that spot, you know, where it's just like, man, you feel the Holy Spirit moving. And I've opened my eyes during that time and saw a host of angels singing with us. Amen? It lets us know we're in the right place doing the right thing at the right time. There's rejoicing. When the shepherd returns home, he calls all the neighbors together, and they all rejoice in the fact that the shepherd and the sheep have been the sheep has been restored back to the fold, back home again. This is a picture of what happens when a lost sheep comes into the fold of the Lord. According to verse 10 of this chapter, there's rejoicing in the presence of angels. So when you come back to the Lord or you come to the Lord, heaven rejoices. They throw a party just for you. Isn't that something? Some of you guys like parties, right? Who likes parties? Who likes birthday parties? So I'm the center of attention. Woohoo! Right? All eyes on me. Right? <laughs> Amen? Well, guess what? When you give your life to Jesus, the angels rejoice in heaven for you. They await you. Amen? Just like the Father with his loving arms awaits you. The family awaits us. A few reasons why the sheep has been, well, a few reasons of what the sheep has been saved from. Disuse. As long as it was lost, it was no benefit to the shepherd. As long as we're lost, we're no, we're no good to him. As long as we're in a backslidden condition, we're no good to him. The Lord cannot use a wayward person or a wayward life. He demands holy vessels. That's what he demands. He doesn't ask for it. He demands a holy vessel separated unto him. He also saves us out of danger. Unless the shepherd had intervened, this sheep would have remained in serious danger. It could have never defended itself or rescued itself. As long as the men are apart from the Lord Jesus Christ, they're in danger. Danger of what? In danger of hell. In danger of damnation. In danger of all the things that we spoke about last week concerning hell. Now, if we go down, and I, I would like to put this portion of the scripture on here in uh, verse 18. I, don't, I, I wasn't going to do this initially, but I want us to see something here because we're going to be dealing with different types of people when it comes to uh, Friday, this Friday, or even during the week. So the, the Bible says in, in uh, verse 15, uh, uh, chapter, I mean, I'm sorry, chapter 15, verse 8 of Luke, it says here, the lost coin. The parable of the lost coin, or what woman having ten silver coins, if she loses one, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it. And when she has found it, she calls her friends and neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found this peace which I had lost. Likewise, I say to you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. We'll keep going. The lost son. Then he said, A certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me my portion of the goods that falls to me. So he divided them in his livelihood. Not many uh, days after, the younger brother gathered all together, and he went off to a far country. Now, you know that parable of the lost uh, son. We have a parable of the lost sheep, and we have a parable of the lost coin. Now, a little homework for you is to read chapter 15, the lost, the lost chapter, right? And did you know that each one of these things represents something different? You see, the lost sheep, since... Lost sheep are not very wise. They're ignorantly lost. Some people don't know anything about God. They are not churched. They've never been churched. So they're going to look at you strange sometimes. Because they're like, what are you talking about? Well, that's this person here, this category. They are a sheep. So they're not, and without the spirit of God, not very bright, right? Have you ever met the smartest dumb people in the world? That we know who they are, right? We've all met one. Or they just, they're book smart, but life, they just ain't getting it. They need Jesus. Those people need Jesus. Then you have the lost coin. And the lost coin, when you lose money, do you lose it on purpose? No, you don't. These people represent the accidentally lost. They fall through the cracks. Somebody doesn't notice them at church. They say, Lord, if you would just have somebody say hi to me today. I'll stay. 
And then nobody says hi to them. And they thought, well, maybe God just didn't hear me. And since I don't know the Lord, maybe he just doesn't love me. They fall through the cracks. They're accidentally lost. But it says that she goes back and she looks in the darkness. She sweeps all in the dirt and the muck. She searches and searches until she finds. And when she finds, she calls her friends, and they rejoice. Another party, right? Accidentally lost. And then you have the sheep that are ignorantly lost. And the last one, and I'll close with this, is you have the lost son. And church, this is for us. Because the lost son came from the father's house. He had the blessing of the father. He lived with the father. He lived under the rule and the reign of the Father, and he left. And those are the backsliders that we're going to run into. You see, there's three different types of people we're going to run into. These are those people, church. Matter of fact, some of you were those people at one time. And God so mercifully reached down and, and touched you. So I, my prayer here today is that if you are backslidden, in your condition, if you're watching online and you're backslidden in your condition, if you're lost, you just don't know anything about God, but for some reason you tuned in today or somebody's having you watch this sermon here today, then it's for you. For those of you that feel like you're falling through the cracks and nobody is noticing anything, God sees all. He sees you and he loves you and he awaits for you with open arms. I want you to understand something here today that a spark needs to take place within us, church. Evangelism is one way that we can do that. But we need to be in alignment with the Holy Ghost in order for that to take place. You see, some of us are saved, and what are we doing with it? Do you remember the parable of the talents? What happened to the one that gave one and then hid it, kept it to himself? It was taken from him. It was taken from him. You see, God gives us things for a reason so that they can multiply, so that they can flourish. What are you doing with it here today? Stand with me. My prayer is that the Holy Spirit will have ministered to some, if not all. Because we can all get lost in one of these ways here. Each one of us. Well, I don't know about God. I don't know God. I've never heard of him. Well, you heard now. And when you go on judgment day, and the Lord says, the message was presented to you. Did you heed to the call? Did you heed to the message? Which one of the lost are we? Accidentally? Willfully? Like the prodigal son? He was willfully. He, lo he was lost on his own will. He wanted the world. He chased after his flesh, his desires. All the things that the world has to offer. You know what I love? If you continue to read that story. That the entire time the father was looking out into the distance. Just looking out into the distance with open arms. Waiting. I thought of a story, you know, when I was younger. I used to sneak out the window. And I always thought, man, what would happen if my dad caught me? You know, I knew I would be in trouble. And I never thought for one minute that if I came home and my dad was there knowing what I'd just done, because he knew what I was up to. If he was just there waiting with open arms, like you said, would my life have been changed then? I think it might have. See, because that's how he waits for you to come home. Doesn't matter what you've done, where you've been, who you've been with, none of those things, church. 